we are back. So unfortunately, I'm gonna hold on my hold on myself here. Unfortunately, these two brackets brackets. I keep saying freaking brackets. These two braces, these two floor braces, which is the cowl to the floor brace and one's upper and one's under under the floor. So upper and lower, they're discontinued or they're on back order and there's no there's no expected time for when these will be in. So guess what? We're gonna have to make these and these aren't actually that hard. Um, I went and I you can see I got these two together because I wanted to kind of see where they land on the floor. I'll show you what I got going. This one actually, this one right here on top, this longer one right here, the one where my thumb's at right there, that one's actually gonna, I think I'm gonna put it back in. It's just a little bit of surface and some rust on that bottom part, but it's still pretty thick. It's not, it's not super thin and it's not giving, it's not like failing or anything. So I think I might put that one back in, but this one definitely is not good. You can see that right there. It's got some rust holes where my thumb's at right there. So that one's not good. So these will have to be made, but with the brake, which I got now, and just making that edge in 16 gauge should be pretty easy. So we're gonna, I got them all cleaned up. I got them all grinded down, you can see. And I, and I beat on them and, and flattened all the edges to where they're gonna kind of go. And I'll make a tape pattern and we'll make these too. So unfortunately, this right side, which is all the damage was where I made this piece, right right here, this is a piece that I made previously. I got this, I got this long piece of 16 gauge right here, flat bar, clamped to the top of the rocker, and then I just set it up there to where it's kind of in the go, so there will be a piece of metal in between because the floor will be right here, right? So you can see right there where they had welded to the floor right here, and then right there, and then right there that part of the brace was missing. This one's pretty rusted, you can see right there, so I have to make that one on this right side. I mocked up the other side, the left side, to kind of see where this thing landed on top of this, these two braces landed together because I'm gonna go ahead and make the brace like it originally was. So, so this top one's gonna have to come out here and, and it goes clamped in on this other bottom one. And these will both get made separately. This will get a tape pattern this, this upper one will get a tape pattern. Oh my God, having issues with my light. And this bottom one will get a tape pattern and I'll get all of these made.
pounded it out. When in doubt, pound it out. That's where I drilled the holes. And on some of these edges, it did start to crack, and especially on this outer edge where I was really hammering. Hammering away. There it is right there. As long as you get a basic shape in there, and if you're good enough with the little anvil and like use this, use these A-frames or whatever you got, whatever you got. I just have these A-frames, but whatever you got, use this anvil. I'll get on there and just slap that thing till it goes where I want it. Get a real quick fit. First time fit. See what it looked like. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad for a first time fit, not bad. I ain't mad at it. Not bad, not bad. Shit, I ain't mad at it. Throwing it up there the first time. I could work with that. There is a huge gap right there though. I'm gonna have hammer, 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 shrink, shrink, shrink. But other than that, not looking too shabby. This has to be laid down on this back edge right here and back a little bit this way and down, but I don't hate it. Well, she's pretty close, but no cigar. So I have this end pretty, pretty close to where I need it. I ended up setting up my shrinker and over here on this. So the problem we're having is whenever you start making this, this other top edge right here is it's wanting to like bubble up or bow out. So what I'm having to do is take it to the shrinker, shrink this little area right here and then make that edge, shrink it and make that edge, shrink it and make that edge over and over again. You see right here, I ripped it a little bit right there. That's where the original line was at kind of. And then I went ahead and shrunk it and then planished, shrunk it and planished. And that's what you have to do. What I'm gonna have to do now is go in here just so I can get that edge nice and tight. And over here, it's still a little high right there. But to get that edge nice and tight, I got to, first of all, I got to set up some type of a piece of iron that's kind of rounded, but flat. And I'm gonna have to cut probably some channel or something and, and do like a little shoe shape in the front, like a little duck bill so that I can pound this, this piece against it. Like as a, you know, use it as a dolly or probably use this dolly right here. This one right here because it's got that kind of shape already and do like i said before and weld that because i'm going to need these eventually to be set up so that i can like either use it like this way so i can just like put slide that slide that piece of that edge over and just keep hammering and hammering and forming that edge just like i want it so that's the challenge
did it. So doing this in two folds is not the business, but it looks a lot better. You get a better finished product when you do it. And you can see it's in there pretty flat. Just doing my final, final adjustment. All I gotta do is push it down a little bit, but it does have that, that bow in it on the bottom, and then this part has to be flat. So I was having to shrink in here until it, until it kind of bowed it, bowed it like this, and then I was having to planish and, and stretch this top part out so it laid flat, because it kept wanting to like, you know, bow up. When you start bowing this part, this top part's gonna bow too, so you have to go in there and planish, planish on a straight edge like I was doing, and then you have to keep shrinking that area so it'll, so it'll, it'll bow this bottom, this bottom section, because this does have a slight curve to it. It doesn't, it's not just straight. This trunk starts to, starts to go down progressively and, it, and then it swoops around. So is she lays down flat so you can see right here it's all clamped down and I think what I'll do is I'll cut and butt right in the middle of this this flat part here so I can just planish that nice and clean up the weld on that flat part here where it'll be nice to get to and I can also just run a nice little seam of filler over that so as you can see I'm making it in two sections not only does this have a slight curve down it kind of curves in a little bit all the way and curving down as well so it's pretty tough to make these in two steps usually you can do like a cut and butt to this edge and then cut and butt to this other edge on top but this way it looks cleaner because I can put another section that goes flat up and then over to the quarter panel and then I can weld right on this front on this this lip and it it looks a lot cleaner that way Somebody had said, why don't you just grab one off a of 64 or like something like that, that they do make and then make that, you know, make that edge. And I'm thinking to myself, why would I buy a whole 64 quarter panel just to butcher it up and have the edge? Because they're not gonna just, they don't make just that. Or maybe they do make the little section, but who's to say that it's the same size and, and that it'll fit in there like I want it to when I can just make the pieces. It might take me a little longer, but to modify something that I'm gonna buy prefab doesn't make sense to me. So we will make what we have to make and I'm not gonna cut corners on this thing. That's what happened to this floor. Somebody put a floor out of another car in this thing and it doesn't even match up to the to the original floor. So we're, we're gonna have to put a new trunk floor in this thing because somebody went and put parts out of another car in this car and didn't even do it right. So cutting corners is not an option for me.
pounded on until hell wouldn't have it. Now, we still got a little bow right here. See, the problem with welding these in like this, where it's still bowed out a little bit, is that when you weld it, the heat's gonna make it bow out more. So, that's why we have to keep tightening that line so it gives a little bit of a curve right there while keeping this other edge on the inside nice and flat because this thing does have some curve to it. It's not just straight. This edge right here has to come out a little bit in order for that to lay down. It's getting closer and closer, closer and closer. How I'm judging is I'm looking in here and this gap is closing in more and more. Before, when I first started, there was a big old gap on this inner edge right here. I mean, it was like about so. So I re-angled that edge, re-angled it because it was kind of spread out. A little. So I, I re-angled it, I, I tightened up that edge on the inside and then I, I tried to like bend this down too because see how it's sticking out like this. It's like that. So I wanted to, I wanted to suck in just suck in right there. If you do not get this right, when you go to weld it in, it's gonna make this other section bow out. So that's the issue with doing these curved pieces. down to find me. Look at that. That fool climbed all the way down. Look at, he's just listening like, you gonna kill me, mister? Go get out of here. So we have a pretty good fit now. It's coming along real nice. The only part where it's still kind of bowed out is this area right here. I need this to lay down flatter. I went in there with the hammer and just tapped around while it was clamped down and that's kind of the telltale sign if this thing will bend, bend in a little bit or not, or bend, or bend out actually when you do weld it. But other than that, you look in the corner in there, it's nice and flat. This is laying nice and flat. This other side is laying really nice and flat. I really worked on this side a lot, you can see. So once I do cut this piece out, it'll be in one more step. The only part that I need to work on is right, right in this area right here. So what I'm gonna have to do with this is take it over to the shrinker stretcher and just kind of shrink this edge down a little bit more. So let's see how it's bowed up right there. On the, right here, there's a bow, and then right here, there's a bow. I'll shrink that a little bit, and it's gonna bend. It's gonna bend this this way, and then I'll go ahead and stretch this edge just a little bit, so it'll kind of bend it back. Pretty flat. Just put it down where it's supposed to be. <laughs> 
We are almost touching right there, but it's making that line go in. So that's why it's doing that right there, because this does, this curve does continue all the way through here, if you really think about it. If you really do the math. So, I think with, let me see, if I throw a, I throw a clamp right in the middle, see what happens. This thing sucks down. Suck down, damn it. Eh. Eh. It's still kind of up in this area, but I think, I don't know, it might pass right there. What do you think? Is that passing or not? No, it still kind of goes. side the side view I mean it's pretty close it's touching all the holes right here through here that's how you know that's how you know when it touches the holes that's how you know so what I'm gonna do now to get that line to kind of curve out is I'm gonna go off dolly which just means that I'm gonna hit just off the edge, not right on the doll, not, I'm using this as a dolly, right? So what I'm gonna do is just go off dolly, which means I'm just gonna hit that, hit that on, on the gap, basically. On that first gap, I'm just gonna tap it on right there and it's gonna, what it's gonna do, it's gonna bend this edge like I want it to and kind of bend this line down and bow this, bow this out just a little bit and, and kind of, Actually, it's gonna it's gonna fold this in just a hair because I'm gonna hit it right on the edge and just kind of bend this edge over like that instead of hitting it flat and trying to stretch it. So I'm gonna shrink it a little bit just by just by tapping it right on the on the gap next to the next to the edge. right now that I could say I was done sometimes you just take for freaking ever shit's frustrating it's getting so close but it's just like a little bit more right in this area right here Here, if you look at the shadow, it's just out just a little bit. The rest is noise. Even over here where it curves a lot, it's nice. It's just right here in this area. It's still just, this edge is just out a little bit too much. I gotta suck this edge just in a little bit more.
honestly, you guys, I almost have it. It's like just that little bit right there. If I can get it to go down right now, I will be happy with that. Just a little bit right here. Go down. All right, it's pretty damn good. I'm getting to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna weld it in. But I think I'm gonna go over here and give it a nice little slappy slap. We're gonna see what it looked like. Get on there. See if she laid down. Good girl. Well, I gave it around on the dolly and I feel like it kind of went a little bit south and that sometimes happens. So you have to be careful on doing one process too much. If it starts getting away from you, which it's still savable. I'm gonna go and I feel like the shrinking was doing much better to get that edge to lay down. I feel like I kind of stretched it out a little bit with uh, that one little round of of light tapping you seen I was only doing light tapping but it did kind of stretch it a little bit more so I kind of went not really in reverse because it went in the right direction but it definitely is bowed out a little bit here and right here so it kind of stretched it out a little bit which I was trying to get it to lay down more so we'll go back to the drawing board and Actually, not even go back to the drawing board. We're just gonna go ahead and keep shrinking it. But I did manage to crisp up that line nice. So I was really trying to get this, this outer edge to lay in more. So lay flat against that panel more, which I did manage to get it in some areas, but some areas I did kind of stretch it out a little bit. So I would go back to the shrinker stretcher, actually the shrinker, and just keep shrinking that, that down a little bit more. Okay, now I fill the duckbill pliers with the other wide head pliers on the other side. We'll get it where I need to go. Two thousand years later. Good enough. I thought I was going to do that, but I'm still doing some more shrinking. Oh, now I just fucked it all up. I did it.
I think I did it. Mm. Is it done? I think it's done. I think that's all she's got. I've given her all she's got. Give, 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 give it all you got. That's what you call good enough. So after all that, I think I got this side except for the outer section almost done. There's a little discrepancy right here, but I gotta cut this off because it's laying over the top of that. I gotta cut that off and then make the fold down on this somehow or so I almost got this left side done and it was the same process as when I did this, this um, rear body panel section. And sometimes like these things just get a little bit frustrating. You, you have to like step away for a second. And I took a little, took a little breather, drank some water, took a little breath, went to the bathroom and came back and started messing with this thing again. And I got it pretty flat, pretty laying down pretty good. It's still got a little bit of a little bit of a section here where it's kind of like sticking up here on this corner. And I I'm gonna have to go over and hammer and dolly and crisp up this line. But overall, pretty happy with the way it's coming out. I do have to make a section from here to there where this curve starts. Actually it starts up here, right in this area, but it really gets pronounced here. And I'm doing these in two sections on this part here because simply because my my brake isn't strong enough to make a nice crisp line on that first bend. It's only 30 inches and right around 24, which this is, it starts to like leave the middle, not as pronounced as the outside edges of the first bend, so went ahead and made this 24 inches and now I'm gonna do this last section that goes to right here and this side will be done. It wasn't as bad as the other side where like it's all on the outside, right? Like right here and in here you can see there's some rot right around there. So I'll do those sections separately for the outside piece but I figured I'll come probably out to about right here this has a couple complex curves because this is where the the fin starts to come out right here and this this tail light section where this molding goes starts to come out more pronounced and then it has a couple complex curves right in here it has a a curve in there and also starts to come out this way as well and curves out this way so that's going to be interesting to make stay tuned You'll see, me, you'll see me make a section probably from around right here all the way to this section here and then end up right here. And then this one will be pretty easy, just a box. And I'll chop that out and then make a little box and put that in there. So we're getting rid of all the rust around this trunk and then we'll be on to the floors again. We got the parts ordered. I don't know when they're gonna get here, but We'll be on to making these parts of the floors because they don't make those. And then we'll put the floor pans in to meet those parts on both sides there. So as you can see, I scribed the line where I'm gonna cut and I will cut right to the edge of that black line. I'm gonna get into some of this pitting here, but we still got plenty of meat and back here, a little more pitting, but most of the time guys will just weld on this pitting and fill these holes with weld, but we're actually taking the time to reinforce this a little bit and I'll set those, I'll set those welds on the lowest setting 
and I won't melt the crap out of it, hopefully. And we'll get this, uh, this, we'll get this little section at least tacked in here shortly. Now in the presence of a king. I did the final little grinding on this thing and did hammer a little bit on it after I trimmed it, but that'll be the front part of it up near the roof line and well there ain't no roof on this thing it's convertible but I got my holes punched you can see and we're clamped down the only section that I really don't like is gonna be right here where I kind of went crazy with the die grinder and cut a little bit too much off right there that's not that bad of a gap and I can also push it in push it in whenever I uh, go to weld in there. So other than that, gap's pretty good, nice and tight. See over here. I still got to primer the underneath of these and punch the holes on this one and do a final little, do a final little fit on this little section here that goes to the factory seam right there. To be honest, the reason why I fucked this all up is because I need glasses. I went to the eye doctor and I've always kind of prided myself on having 20-20 vision. And I don't want to admit that I'm getting old, but I need freaking glasses. Look at that. And not only that, freaking line looks like a drunk person cut it, but as long as the gap fits, it really doesn't matter, but it'd be nice to have a straight line right there. But you're not gonna see it anyway because it's gonna be all welded, solid, and finished, so it'll be flat on top. So you won't even see the line, but still, look at that. Yeah, usually I'm pretty good about cutting a straight line. I've learned how to guide the machine, just let the machine do the work, but this time, Shit got wild. I'm having a little issue with this right here. I got this thing so toy that it sucked down in here and I'm having a little hard time bringing this back up to meet this body section right here. Other than that, she's coming along. I'm gonna get her got this front section almost tacked in where I want it. A couple little spots over here that I'm gonna tack. And then I got this one connected right there. And I'll be able to pivot that where I want it. Always tack on the corner where you can pivot. Right on the right on the on the very corner. Or you can go in here on the other corner in there. But that way you can kind of pivot a little bit. It'll it'll allow you to put that in place where you want it. We'll keep going. Like I said before in here where the factory seam is, I overlapped and I just welded to that edge right there. 
And then in here I butt welded it so that I can run a nice little bead of filler in here and it'll be easy to sand. I didn't warp any of this, so I'm, I'm happy about that. There's no warpage here on the edge. So all in all, came out pretty good. The only thing that kind of sucks is you can't really get in here with the die grinder or a roll lock wheel and, and get that. I kind of had to go in there and finish it by hand, but I got in there with my my mini belt sander and kind of went, but it, that, that belt sander kind of, le kind of leaves waves and I really would like to get in there and with a little two inch, but this is, it's not even big enough for a two inch in there. I mean, it, it starts to it starts to hit this edge and I don't want to eat this edge up. I kind of did in this little little spot right here, but not bad. Where to go, right right there. You kind of see I, I, hit, I hit it with the, with the grinder just a little bit right there. So that's the only thing that kind of sucks. And then on these welds, on these plug welds, I had to go in there with the, with the cutoff wheel, thicker cutoff wheel and just kind of grind those because you can't really get in there with anything. They weren't really that high. I just kind of like knocked the tops off of them. So that, that once I primer and paint, the weather strip will lay in there nice and flat. But all in all, pretty good. Did kind of suck in right here a little bit, but not bad. Like I, you, the weather strip will lay right in there, so you won't even be able to see that. So all in all, pretty happy with the results.